In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Flutterflow's VS Code extension to edit your custom functions, actions, and widgets. So make sure you have VS Code downloaded and open it up. So in VS Code, you need to install the Flutterflow extension. So you can just come over here to extensions and search for Flutterflow. This is the one right here and install it. In order to set it up, we need to get an API key so your extension can pull your Flutterflow projects. So jump over to your Flutterflow dashboard. So here in your dashboard, go to your name and down to API token and create a token. Then copy that token and jump back into VS Code. Next, you wanna come over here to settings and settings and scroll all the way down to the bottom and paste in your API key. So the next step is to download your project. So I've got this shopping cart app right here. And what you're gonna need is a project ID that you can come up by going here and copying this project ID. Okay, so let's go into our command palette here and you can get that by hitting shift command P. And if you just search for Flutterflow, you can see all the Flutterflow commands right here. Now I wanna download some code, so let's click that, and then paste in that project ID. Hit return. Next, it gives you the option to select a branch. If you leave it blank, it'll default to the main branch, and that's what I want. Next, select a folder where you want this project to be downloaded on, on your machine. I've got a folder where I store all of my Flutterflow projects, so I'm gonna select that location. Okay, so we've downloaded our project, but notice we get in this notification here that says that we should run pub get. Now that's coming from my Dart extension that I have installed right here. And when you're working with Flutter and Dart projects, you really should install the Flutter and Dart extensions. And because this is saying source Dart, this is the Dart extension recognizing that I need to run pub get in order to get all of the packages I'm using in the project. So let's run that. Okay, great, we're all set up here. All right, last thing to do is we need to start a coding session. So in your command palette again, do shift command P and down here, start code editing session. Now you'll notice when you start this code editing session that down at the bottom here, we've got some options. We can pull down the latest changes. If we've been working on the project, you can push the changes we've made here to our remote flow Flutterflow project, or if you wanna access that project, you can click here and it'll bring you to it. Okay, now keep in mind that currently, the only files that you can edit are custom functions, custom widgets, and custom actions. So while you can see all the code from your project, you can't edit it all right here. So the files you can exit are inside the lib folder, inside custom code, that's where you'll find your actions and widgets, and your custom functions, you can find inside this Flutterflow custom functions.dart file. Okay, so we're ready to start coding, but let's take a look at the project first to see what we wanna do. So we're gonna do two things in this project, write a custom function and a custom widget. So first the custom function, and we're gonna need a custom function to sum up the total of these products right here. Now, these are just chairs I have inside this cart right here. And so you can see if we open this up, we've got the name of the chair, the price, a color, and an image. So these are all of the items in my cart, and I'm gonna to need to sum up all of their their prices. Okay, so let's go over to our custom code and let's add a new custom function right here. We'll call it sum cart. It's going to return a double and the arguments I'm gonna add in are those products. And that's gonna be set to a data type that is our cart and it is a list. Okay, great. Now with the extension, you can create your custom functions from scratch from VS Code, but sometimes it's easier to define the arguments and the return types here and then go in and write the body of the function in VS Code. All right, so let's just return a double so we can save this, save it. Okay, all right, let's jump back into VS Code. Next, because we created that function, we wanna pull the latest changes. Now this is just gonna tell us that any changes we've made here will be overwritten when we pull the project again, and that's fine. All right, that was a custom function, so let's go in here and we can see it right there, beautiful. Now, because you have access to this whole project here, you'll always have access to all of your custom functions, your app state, and constants. So if you wanna access those, those are found in FF app state. And so you can see here that we've got one app state variable here. That is our cart that we already saw. Or if you wanna access your constants, those are found under FF constants. I've got one right here and it's just a red color. Okay, but we don't need any of those. What we do need is to write this sum function. But of course we have these great copilots now like GitHub Copilot. So let's use that. Now, if you don't have that, you can install that by going to extensions and searching for GitHub Copilot. That's these 
these two extensions right here. Once you have those installed, you get access to this little menu right here. All right, so let's open our chat right here. Let's give ourselves some more space. And it automatically added this file to its context. Okay, so what do I want it to do? Return the sum of cart struck price property. And you can select whichever model you want to use. I'll stick with 4.0, that's fine, and enter. All right, let's take a look here. So it's calling products.fold. It's summing the running total and returning it. Yeah, that looks great. In order to apply this change, you can either click this first button here, which will apply it in the editor. The second option will insert it wherever your cursor is, or you can copy it to the clipboard. And I'll just choose the first one. Now here, it'll show you the changes, and that looks good, so let me accept that. All right, beautiful, that looks good. So I'm going to save that and push it to Flutterflow. All right, it's synced, now let's jump over to Flutterflow. Here we are, and you can just refresh the page in order to see the latest changes. And there it is, great. All right, let's go apply this. So here is my text, I don't want that. What I want is my sum function right here, and we can pass in our cart items right there. Confirm, and let's change our number format, and we want our number format to be like this, and we wanna display it as currency, set it to automatic, and the currency symbol will be that. Okay, confirm, and let's test it out. All right, let me check this math in my head. Okay, yeah, beautiful, it works. The last thing I wanna do is make a custom widget. And I found this cool pub dev package called Animated Lerp that lerps or kind of animates the number. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this right here and go back into Flutterflow. Let's go to our custom code. Let's add a new widget right here. We're gonna add a dependency, which is that package. The parameters we add in will be the sum. That's gonna be a double. And let's just change the name. This will be animated widget. And let's grab that and copy it to the editor. Lastly, let's add our import right here, which you can find right here. And we'll add that in and save our widget. All right, let's jump into VS Code. And here, let's pull the latest changes. We'll close this window here. Let's open up our Explorer, go into our Widgets folder, and we've got this animated widget, great. All right, so I've pulled my latest changes here, and I'm just gonna post some example code from the package. Great, so let's save that, and let's push it to Flutterflow. All right, so here's my code, so let's add it to my project. So I've already deleted my previous text right here, so we can just come into our container right here and add in our animated widget. I want its height and width to be determined by the widget itself, so we'll just set that to something. And because this lerps between two values, I've set up a page state variable right here which will be the value. So when the page loads, we want to add an action to update that page state variable right there. And we want to update that with the function we just wrote. So sum cart, and let's add in our cart right there. Beautiful. Lastly, let's come over here and let's bind that value right here to our page state variable. And let's test it out. Beautiful. And that's how to use Flutterflow's VS Code extension. Let us know if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next video.